emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So today we are going to see uh, what is an annotation. Okay, will sound no sound? Okay, do you get the sound right now? Okay, okay. So let me uh, take up the advantage to uh, make you understand what is an annotation basically is, and uh, down the line uh, you'll see a lot of annotations. What is annotations and stuff? Okay. So annotation is nothing but a kind of a metadata. Okay. Okay. Uh, which we are going to. Okay. So it is kind of a metadata which we are going to add it on some methods. All right. So let's see uh, the very first example of an annotation. What is an annotation here? Uh, so let me take create a new new class here. Okay. Let me even create a new package here. New package. And uh, let me say it as annotation. And finish. Okay. Now let me create two classes: one super class and one uh, one subclass. So let me create a class. Let's say uh, I can create the same class as uh, animal. Okay. Uh, and as you know, if you add same file name in uh, two file names in the same folder, you cannot basically do that. Okay. Now, if you can see, already I have created an animal. Uh, under your which package that is your methods package okay i have no restrictions to create an, a new animal class in a different package now i am using a different package out here okay so this is one thing which you need to understand here all right so in this annotation also i'm going to use the same uh, class as animal okay so i created an animal what i can do i can basically copy the complete animal class here uh, i have no restrictions at all so let me basically uh, use this. I am not interested in any other methods or constructor. So I'm just interested in the properties here. Okay. Now, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to create a method. Let's say public void uh, call me. All right. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's say let's take the same uh, print my behavior. Okay. So I took the same method name here. And I'm just going to give a body to it. All right. And I'm going to say uh, sys out. And here I'm going to say here. Uh, I'm going to say I am an animal. Okay. Now, as we discussed yesterday, that if uh, you can basically extend a class, right? Uh, because you want to do some inheritance. So for that reason, uh, you can inherit a class by saying extends, right? So let me say new uh, class and say dog here. Finish. And even there's an option here. Uh, I can say super class as let's say animal. Okay. Now you can choose which animal because you have animals in both the places. One in, in annotation, one is in methods. So I, I'm only interested in the uh, animal class, which is there in your annotation. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this and I got this over here. All right, and finish. Now, uh, let's see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically uh, use the same method, right? So what it is here, I have got the method as uh, print my behavior. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. All right, now I have no doubts that, okay, I just copied and pasted. All right. Sometimes what happens is uh, you, uh, let's say you have got a main method here or, okay. So let me create a main method here. All right. 
And in the main method, uh, what you do is you just say uh, dog d equals to new dog. All right. And you say here as d dot print my behavior. All right. And you know that very well. If suppose I do not uh, override my method. Okay. So if I run this application, uh, if you are in this run as Java application, I basically get I am an animal because uh, it is going to basically invoke the super class method that is my uh, that is a print my behavior. All right. And if you want to override it, you can very well override this by saying uh, the copying the same signature from the super class and putting it here and say uh, I'm not an animal. I'm an animal, but in specific, I am a dog. Okay. Now, uh, what happens usually your main intention is to override it. All right. But sometimes what happens is you basically, uh, let's say this method name is pretty big and uh, all of a sudden you just by mistake. Okay. You have not given the uh, name as behavior completely. Okay. It is, you have got some spelling mistake here, which you did not basically uh, figure out or you are pretty much uh, you're, you're, you're doing a lot of coding and you just missed out anyhow. All right. Now if I run this, uh, it's well and good. Everything is good. I, I run this application run as Java application. I get it as I am manual. Okay. And then you come to know, okay, what is the problem? Uh, I click here with the help of this editor. I can e easily find out. Okay. It is basically going here. It is not coming to this particular method. Right. So what I can do, I can come here and I can say behavior. So I'm good right now. The moment I click here, it goes to print my behavior here. All right. But on top of that, if you want to make sure that yes, the method which I have overridden is proper. Okay. So what you can do is you can basically annotate with an annotation known as override. All right. Now, what did you do? You have annotated this particular method with an uh, annotation as override. That means you are saying that this method has been overridden from your super class. Okay. Now let me, so this is well and good. I mean, I have no even problems here, even in, in my, even though if I don't add this and if my spelling mistake is good, uh, sorry, uh, spelling is good. I have no problems at all. I can even run this application, run as Java application. Okay. I have no problems, but what is the use of this annotation? In case you missed out this name, if suppose I'm going to say B E H, I have missed out a right during compile time itself, it is going to throw you a compile time error saying that you have annotated this one. The method print my behavior of the type dog must override or implement a super type method. So it very well says you that you are supposed to override it, but you are not overriding because in the super class, there is no method as such as print my behavior. Okay. So uh, what is the use of annotation here? This is one sort of annotation. There are a lot of other uh, uh, behavior of an annotations, which we'll see it one by one. Okay. So here I just told override. That means I am supposed to override the existing method, which is there in the super class. Okay. So right click run as Java application. All right. So this is a small example of uh, what is an annotation. Uh, slowly, uh, when we talk about all advanced Java courses, we'll see a lot of annotations there. So just keep this in mind that annotation is nothing but a metadata for a particular method. Okay. We are going to see metadata for a particular class also and uh, whatnot. All right. Uh, all right. So this is what all about annotation. Okay. So my, our next topic will be, uh, we already know how to access methods, right? So in the, uh, let me come here. Okay. So we even spoke about methods. So let me come here and say calculation. All right. Now here, uh, I have added a couple of methods. Uh, we spoke about a method which is having a written type, a method which is uh, not having a written type, right? So even this is a method which doesn't have a written type, correct? And uh, let's say, let me comment this out. All right. Now, in order to access a particular method, okay, what you do basically, you create an instance of a method, right? Sorry, method uh, instance of a class. And then you say, the reference dot add me correct so that's what it happens here the moment you say add uh, dot add me it basically invokes this particular method okay now uh, here 
at one point of time i do i mean my functionality is only to add something okay so what i can do is uh, instead of having this creating an instance okay i don't want to create an instance of this calculation i just want to say calculation dot add to numbers that's all but for that reason what i have to do is i have to say calculation add equals to new of calculation and then i have to give two numbers to add right i can even do it in this way otherwise okay so let's uh, do it in the other way out uh, let me take uh, a new package here right click new package and say uh, static uh, methods and variables okay let me just make it a static example okay now let me copy the same class let's say calculation uh, right click new class and say calculate otherwise calculate okay and i have a public method main method here and what am i going to do here i'm going to have uh, let's say a method let's say public void add and this add is going to take two parameters in it let's say int i comma int j and then you're going to say uh sys out okay and you're going to just say here i plus j okay now what you do basically from your uh, main method or you can even have an external class also from where you can basically create an instance saying calculate calc equals to new calculate and then you basically say uh, calc dot add by saying here two and three okay now what i can do if i have it in the on the method level i can create only one instance and what i can do i can say and this this and this so i can say here uh four i can just say five here right so moment i run this run as java application i say five six seven here okay so this is very simple <coughs> I just created a method and I I'm just trying to access that particular method using the reference of that particular object. Okay. Now, what is the other way out? I don't want to create an instance of a particular class. Okay. I don't want to create a memory space somewhere in the class uh, in the heap. Okay. So what I can do is I will just make this particular method as static. All right. Now, uh, if I make the method as static, I have no changes here at all. If I even run this application, I'm good here. I can say five, six, seven. I have no problems at all. Okay. But what is the other way out of accessing this particular static method? Okay. We're talking about method, which is static. Okay. Now what I can do, let me just keep it uh, as it is. So let me only keep it only one method here. And let me say accessing static methods okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say c a l c u l a t calculate dot add all right so i'm going to say 23 and 2 right so let me run this right click run as java application okay so what is the conclusion here when your method now let's say let me even remove this right now okay so when I remove this, what do you get? You are okay with this, but what happens when you remove this? You basically get a compile time error, okay? Which says cannot make a static reference to a non-static method. All right. So it says that you you cannot make a static reference to a non-static method. That means we are basically calling a method which is not static. All right. So in order to make your uh, your your methods are static okay if you make your method methods is static so directly you can access those things all right but there is no restriction for you to not even make a, the instance of the class and invoke that as well you can even do it in this way okay but uh, when usually what happens you uh, you just want to do some calculation okay so you don't want to 
uh, do anything apart from that. So you basically create a static method, okay? And you basically access those methods, all right? You do not uh, create a reference of a, or a, an object of that particular class, okay? Now, the same thing goes for your uh, instance variables also, okay? If you say int i, or uh, let's say int uh, value, uh, okay, just a value, all right? Now, what I can do here is, uh, if this is not a static, okay, okay, let me take a new method here, public uh, void subtract and give the value. Can we have a static method that contains local variable that are non-static? We'll see that right now, okay? Uh, okay, so public void uh, subtraction int i comma int j all right now what i can do here is uh, this is uh, a non static method and i want to say sys out okay i want to say uh, value plus this is I'm going to say i plus j. Okay. Now, uh, what I can do, the move, uh, if suppose I have initialized this value as uh, 100. Okay. So, what I can do basically, I, if you can see here, if this particular uh, variable is a non-static, I can very well access this here. Even though if I make this as a static, Okay, I have no restriction in accessing this one. All right, but we'll see one more thing here. If you have a, let's say this method is static. I'm making this a static and remove this. Okay, you basically get a compile time error. Okay, it, it says us cannot make a static reference to a non-static field. Did that answer your question? Okay, so here the objective is if you have a static uh, method, okay, uh, okay, there is a reason behind this, okay, which we are going to discuss it right now. Uh, okay, let me before that say this is static. All right. Now, uh, what I can do here when a method is static without even creating an instance of a particular method, I can basically access the method. Sorry, yeah, access the method. The same thing goes here also. If suppose I want to say sys out and I want to say calculate uh, dot, I want to say copy this dot value, right? I don't have to create an instance of that particular class in order to access the value of the variable. Okay, and this is not an instance variable right now. This is a class variable. We have already discussed this yesterday. Okay, now right click, run as Java application, you get the value as 100. Okay, uh, now coming to uh, going back to the very first class. Okay, uh, what is this public static void mean? Okay, now uh, I can answer you or I can make you explain properly what is the use of your public static void main, okay? Now, as you know, at this point of time, the moment you say static to a method, you don't have to create an instance of that particular method, okay? So what happens basically when you uh, when you run this particular class in the, in the virtual machine, okay? Uh, the virtual machine basically, uh, I mean, he doesn't, I mean, there, first of all, he will not even create, a, create an instance of the class, okay? So without even creating an instance of the class, what he is going to do is he's directly going to access this method. Now, if this method is, is not static, what virtual machine has to do? He has to create an instance of the class and then say main method, okay? So something like uh, someone has to say calculate, okay? And calc dot main all right so even there is no harm in doing this all right uh, from from technical perspective here 
but virtual machine do doesn't want to create an instance of that class instead he want to access the particular main method which is the uh, starting point of any of the program by directly accessing the main method and the main method is static here all right okay uh, did that clear uh, clear things on the static we have got one more thing on static also which we'll see right now and we even had a discussion yesterday uh, about the uh, uh, we we spoke about uh, the uh, the method methods how to access it also right even a non studying method for a non studying method you have to create an instance here all right now uh, we spoke about uh, static we spoke about uh, static variables we sp spoke about uh, the static methods we are good here right now in Java you so question is in real time application when to use static variables okay now uh, it's a good question okay there's a question here that in real time uh, application when to use a static variable all right uh, now let's say in this this example let me even remove this uh, Uh, I want to say here that the number of times, let's say uh, how many times, let's say you have used calculation right now as add. Okay, I can say add again, right? I can say three and two. Uh, now, what I what I want is the moment I say add, all right. I want to basically access or I want to increment this value. Okay, so I say in add value plus plus and let's say this value is okay. Let me just change the signature, just change the name here. Uh, let me say it as uh, count call. So why did I made, made it as count call? Because I want to check how many times this particular calculation has been done. I mean, how many times somebody has invoked this calculate method to calculate it. Okay, so count call and count call. So I want to understand here that, okay, after this, I'm going to tell you uh, the real example. Okay, but this is real example we'll see down the line also. But this is kind of a uh, example which I'll uh, you can easily understand at what point of time you'd use it. Okay, now here I'm saying count call plus plus. The moment I call add, I'm basically incrementing this call. Okay, so I have used this uh, calculation method multiple times. Let's say down the line you are very curious to know how many times you uh, somebody or uh, how many times the clients have basically called your add method because your add method is very precious and you want to know how many times somebody has called it okay now if i run this application now let's see what's going to happen here if this value is zero let's say uh right click run as java application all right now what do you get the value here so let me say count total count is so and so so what i can do right click run as java application okay now it says count three is uh, count a uh, total count is three why because you have accessed this three times now in real time what happens let's say in your your you are holding a website okay now you want to count uh, how many times of your website has been hit okay or at one point of time you want to count get the count of uh, how many requests you have got all right at those point of time usually what happens you make you you create a static variable when you talk about java okay and you keep uh, incrementing or uh, supposedly you get a lot of requests from a lot of places so you keep incrementing the count there so when you make a static variable anyone accesses let's say creates an object let's say i uh, somebody is accessing your website and saying calculate dot add right so you are giving the response to them 
by saying giving some information but apart from that you want to say okay how many times somebody has created an instance of the uh, sorry created invoked the method as add okay so in real time whenever you have a uh, static variable okay and static variables are very important to understand because uh, usually the application uh, you have to understand at what point of time you need to use a static variable okay so in this in this case my my objective is to uh, keep a hold of the count okay for that reason i'm just incrementing these values okay did that partially answer your question okay uh, all right now uh, when i spoke about static uh, variable uh, static method there is something as static okay so in java you have something like static block so this is known as your static block okay now what you can do uh, in your static block let's say what's what's going to happen i'm just going to say sys out okay and why i am able to access the uh, the method system dot out okay so if you even open this uh, where is that how o u t system dot out okay now okay so if you can see here your out okay this is kind of a variable which is present in your system okay that is your java dot lang dot system in this this is also static for that reason i'm directly able to access the uh, the the variable that is a system dot out okay now as you know in the ex example here if this is not static if you remove this uh, yeah there's some question coming up i'll just answer right now if i remove the static here and you can see i'm getting some compilation issues right let me make it a static here all right now if okay if i remove it you can see in the static block i cannot access a non static variable when i make it a static i am able to access it the same way inside a static okay i can directly access anything here right now if i say uh, let me use it here and say plus count call right now let me take uh, what is this a uh, duplicate okay duplicate variable delete this let me take uh int let's say non static okay equals to 0 let me try accessing it here also okay so i'll just say non static all right now i know variable that uh, i cannot access a non static variable from any of the static blocks okay it it could be a static block it could be a static method also all right so the question right now is uh, so in this way can we check how many times a particular word in the web page uh, particular word in the web page comes uh, what does this this mean harpreet uh, you can uh, you can you can ask me the question and mute yourself and ask the question the uh, if we are working on some web page mm -hmm. we want to uh, count the number of particular words say if we are uh, working on some web page or searching for something mm -hmm. if uh, we open a page with the java search mm -hmm. and we want to count the word in java in the web page how many times the word java comes out so can we count the particular string of word in this way if we count as a count call like that uh not i mean see when we talk about counting a word there are different ways of doing it you can directly read those words and you can basically uh, count it i mean there is an option uh, yes you can, even you can use that as well but usually you don't use it for that okay i mean you, you can simply use a normal counter also by saying i plus plus wherein you can basically understand or you can easily know uh, how many times a word is present in in your web page okay you basically don't use it for that particular purpose all right okay all right so uh, okay 
Now, let me take a constructor also here. Okay, so let me take a cal constructor. Uh, okay, let me do one thing. Mm, JRE runtime dot jar. Right. Let me go to the package navigator. Okay, and uh, create a new class with a static block. So I created a class of static block. Let me remove it from here and copy this and push it here. Okay. So what did I do? I just pushed this particular static block somewhere here. So and let me have a count call over here also. And let me initialize this value to let's say zero. Cannot make a static reference. Okay, sorry. So this is your int, static int, and so and so. All right. So on top of that, let me add a constructor here. So I'll say static block as a constructor here. Okay. Now uh, remove this, remove this, and in the constructor, let me simply say sys out. And I want to say uh, I am the constructor. All right. And here instead of this one, let me say sys out. And I, I want to say I am the static block. I am the static block. And that's all. All right. So what did I do? I created a, uh, this is also not required as of now. I created a static block. I created a constructor and I created a main method and in the main method, I'm going to say static block SB equals to new static block. Now I'm going to say uh, SB, that's all. That's all, okay? My program ends here. So what I did is the moment I say uh, static block SB equals to new static block, that means I'm creating an instance of this particular class. So the moment I create an instance of this class, you know that the constructor gets invoked. All right. So if you simply say uh, like this, okay, will your uh, object gets created here? Right click run as Java application, right? Nothing. Okay. Now, but what happens here, even though you do not create an instance of your class, your static block is the one which will be executed first. Okay. In the life cycle of your uh, class, if you have a static block, okay, your static block will be executed first. And if you see this, if I run this application right now, run as Java application, even before your constructor is getting executed, right, your static block is going to get executed. Okay. Now the way, uh, if you want to initialize something here, in, initialize some uh, values. You can initialize it here with your constructor. But way, way before that, if you want to do uh, something on this, let's say you want to have some connection when we talk about JDBC, I'll use the same static block there in order to act uh, in order to get the connection. Okay, so just stay tuned. We'll talk about this. Uh, the actual use of it is uh, in your subsequent classes when we talk about your JDBC when we talk about some of the classes. Uh, in in your uh, Java database connectivity. Okay, so just at this point of time, understand that when you have a static block, okay, even before creating an object of uh, of that particular class, it invokes the static block. All right, all right. So, any questions from anyone? All right. I don't see any questions. All right, okay. H2K emphasis. 
provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.